Asks It's Angelo, and today is Friday, and therefore time for another Ask Angelo Q&A, where you get to ask questions and I answer them. I've been getting a lot of interesting questions this week as well, and I'm always happy to answer those, and in what better way than making a video? I tried answering questions that were either asked by multiple people, or very interesting, important questions that we should discuss. If you too have a question you would like answered, feel free to write them in the comments or under any video you watch and have a question about, as I check all of them weekly and pick out some accordingly. You can also join the Discord and ask away in the Ask Angelo thread yourself. Good, of course now that being said, let's go right ahead and have a look. The first question of this week comes from Ben, who asks, Hey, is there a haste cap for Shadow? I was looking around but couldn't find any solid answers. I'm running 22% crit and 37% haste unbuffed, so I'm getting around 40 stacks of void form, but would I be better off getting more crit? A good question to ask, and the answer is that no, there is no haste cap, so to speak, so just like crit, you can stack as much of it as you can get your hands on. Your simulations will be based off of your stat weights, and depending on how much of a stat you already have, this will affect how that stat or rather those stat weights will shift in value for you. From what you're saying, you have a lot of haste to be honest, so you should definitely start aiming for some crit. The rule of thumb of course is that you want to aim for an equal high value of both stats if possible. Next up we have a question from Roz, a discord user, asking if our haste keeps stacking with the amount of insanity we have, do we need to reapply dots for them to get that haste benefit? The quick and simple answer is no, you do not. Snapshotting in that sense is mostly a thing of the past, and our dots work dynamically with the amount of stats we have or we rather gain at any point during the fight. Sam Aubakir asks, can you update your Kui nameplates? It seems to me that in the description of the video you have the old settings, as it looks different to what I have now. Yes, of course I'll update them, and in the description box below you should now see the updated Kui nameplate settings in a screenshot, and I'll keep this screenshot down in the description of all upcoming videos. Thanks for telling me. Sebastian, a fellow Discord member, asks what my favorite boss in the new raid is. And I honestly had to think for a few moments. Um, I actually like all bosses, but I'd have to say that the Dark Inquisitor Xanash on Mythic difficulty is pretty fun, as there are actually up to three extra adds which spawn and we can cleave off of. Overall, so far, I'd have to say that I'd like, or rather I like, the Carapace of Nazoth the most, as it has three different boss stages, lots of adds, but also single target moments, and overall a pretty nice variety within the fight. What's your favorite boss? Be sure to let me know as well. Shin Zhao from the YouTube comments asks, Do you ever get tempted to level an alt? I want to main my priest and spend zero time in other classes. Sometimes that's hard though. How do you cope with the temptations to alt and just stay on your priest? A good question, and the true answer is actually that I don't just play my priest. When I'm not raiding, editing videos, or I'm out and about doing real life stuff, I actually really enjoy playing other classes, like for example my Demon Hunter. I raid Heroic with that character though in Pogs most of the time, but having something else to play is a lot of fun and actually lets you see different aspects and viewpoints of encounters, which definitely helps you to understand certain aspects better on your main. BFA does make it pretty difficult though to keep two characters or even more on a competitive level in my personal opinion, so my Demon Hunter is pretty much the only alt I play and sometimes my rogue. I'd also like to make Demon Hunter guides at one point eventually, but let me know what you think, and if you'd like to see that. And our final question of this week comes from Timbo over on YouTube. He says, Hi Angelo, I've got a question regarding the Nazoth trinket, so I'm pretty sure he means the Manifesto of Madness. I obviously pair it with the Iris Beam when I play it, but when do I use it when I'm using Memory of Lucid Dreams or Condensed Life Force in single target situations? Just on pull and then on cooldown? Thanks a lot, no problem of course, and that's a very good question, as the answer is kind of tricky. 
Now, I actually had to run through some logs myself to consider this one and had to ask other knowledgeable priests to see when they use it and I've come to the conclusion that most priests use it once they get into void form or just a few seconds after and then let the trinket ramp up during the void form. With a good void form, the entire trinket duration will take place within the void form as the critical strike you gain will increase the void form uptime and then versatility which you will be getting once you drop out of void form will push your damage pretty firmly. Now of course I hope this helped and let me know if you find out anything else about the use of the trinket. Alright guys, that does it for this week's Q&A. I hope I was able to answer these questions to your satisfaction and if you're watching this and have a question as well, don't hesitate. Ask away in the comment section below or join our Discord and ask in the weekly Ask Angelo thread. Next week, we'll be talking about Shadow Priest corruption items post nerf and which effects you will want to be playing with. As always, thank you so much for watching, enjoy your weekend and patch 8.3 and I will see you all in the next one.